So that leads us to the next stage of synthesis, which is technology mapping. So in, technology mapping is the phase of logic synthesis when the gates are selected from a technology library to implement the circuit. In fact, up till now, all we had was a generic representation. It could be uh, in the form of just some sort of Boolean logic, such as a BDD or something like that. Or um, usually we take these generic gates and an OR and so forth gates that are inside the synthesis tool or the inside the code of the synthesis tool, but they don't have things such as drive strength and uh, they, they don't have, we don't know their size and so forth. They're just a bunch of gates that are representative and uh, they allow us to do the different multi-level logic optimization. Now we actually have to go to our standard cell library that we, remember, we loaded it in, in uh, library definition or in the first part of this lecture. And um, we have to actually map our logic to these, uh, these actual standard cells. So why do we need to do technology mapping? Why is this a very important, in some cases, the most important point of our whole synthesis flow? So straight implementation not be good. If we just take these generics and put a, a gate there that we have in our standard cell library, we may not arrive at a good solution. For example, let's say we have uh, a uh, type of a function, which is f equals a, b, c, d, e, f. Um, that's a six input AND gate, but as we saw, we don't have uh, six input AND gates usually in our standard cell libraries because uh, the higher the fan end, the worse the gate is, and so we usually only have four input gates. Therefore, we have to actually make this into a different uh, function, um, divided into several levels and so forth. Um, and remember that we have all these gates in the library. They're pre-designed. They're usually optimized in terms of area, delay, power, etc. And we should find the way to do this uh, most efficiently. So this is why we need to do technology mapping. Um, the way that we're going to do technology mapping is to apply a minimum cost tree covering algorithm to solve the problem. And it's uh, actually very cool if uh, beforehand we discussed heuristics, which didn't actually find us an optimal solution, but a good enough solution. Um, in, in this case, we're going to actually apply some optimal algorithms, which will find the best solution under a number of assumptions. So let's go over the technology mapping algorithm. What we're going to do is we're going to use this recursive tree covering algorithm. Yes, recursive. Many of our algorithms in, in EDA are recursive, okay? Um, and we can uh, easily and almost optimally map a logic network to a technology library. This is done in three steps. The first step is what is calling mapping the netlist and the technology library to simple gates. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our whole netlist, our whole uh, netlist of generic gates, and break it down to NAND2 gates, or two input NAND gates, and NOT gates, which are basic gates that are a universal set, and we can do that, and we're gonna see how we're gonna do that. The other thing is we're gonna take the standard cell library, and we're also gonna describe it just with NAND and NOT gates. So if we have some sort of other gate, we're gonna turn it into two input NAND and, two, and one input NOT gates. Um, in addition, for each of these standard cells, we're gonna give it some sort of a cost, some sort of a number that will say how much it costs that we can use this to minimize this cost function. Okay. Uh, the second stage is what we call treeifying. So tree covering, which is what we're doing, a recursive tree covering algorithm, only can work on a tree. Okay. A tree is something that has a root and has leaves, and each leaf only has one root, or um, the top of the tree, it only has a single uh, parent. Okay. So uh, what we have to do is we have to find all the places where we have a large fan out, because if, if, if uh, we have a fan out, which we'll see in a moment, then we get more than one um, root for each leaf node. So we have to break this, and here's some sort of a level of uh, lack of uh, optimality, because uh, what we have to do is break these at certain points uh, with some sort of heuristic or decision, and then connect them together at the end, which I won't be discussing here, but there are algorithms and heuristics, how to connect the trees back into one big tree. Finally, we apply this minimum cost tree matching algorithm, which recursively goes over the, um, the different trees that we made and puts and maps standard cells according to their cost. And yes, it does reach an optimal um, solution, at least for the inputs that we give, it, uh, we give it, which are these costs of each gate and these treeified input netlists. Okay, so let's go through these steps in an illustrative fashion. So the first step we said is simple gate matching. So what we have to do is we have to take our um, whole Boolean function or our whole combinatorial network, and we have to apply De Morgan to turn it into two input NANDs and NOT gates. 
Okay, so this is the function that we arrived before at after we minimized our uh, multi-level optimization with all these T's and F's and so forth. And what we're going to do is we're going to start applying De Morgan here, and we're going to turn each one of these T's into a bunch of NAND gates or NAND and NOT gates. So we have bars here and we have NANDs. And so we can draw this on the outside as a whole bunch of NAND and NOT gates. So all of the this stuff is now only NAND and NOT gates. And it's very important that we get it into NAND and NOT gates. Okay. The other part of our simple gate mapping is we take the standard cell library and we do the same thing. So it's obvious when we take a NOT gate, it just turns into a NOT gate because that's only described with an and and NOT gate. And we also give it a cost. So this inverter, we gave it a cost of one. Okay. Then we look at, for example, this two input NAND gate, and we can also describe it just with a NAND gate. So um, a two input NAND gate turns into a NAND gate, and we decided that its cost is two. Well, we have this NOR gate, and for example, just as a, a, a type of a study, you could say that in CMOS, a NAND, a two input NAND and a two input NOT, they're kind of inherent to CMOS. Um, however, to turn a, uh, an, uh, excuse me, a two input NOR gate, uh, to turn a two input NOR gate into a bunch of NANDs and NOTs, we have to do some sort of De Morgan, and we get this three level logic, three stage logic. But since it's in internal and or inherent to CMOS, we can also give it a, cost, a low cost, for example, two. Then we take these other gates, and we again have to apply De Morgan and map them just into two input NANDs and NOT gates. And we'll do that and we'll give each one of them some sort of a cost according to the complexity of the gate or some other metric that we applied again how we um, give these costs that's actually an art and it's not something that's optimal it's uh, something that's done according to all kinds of heuristics and according to all kinds of decisions and so forth maybe how we characterize our lib files depends on maybe on size maybe on power etc so these are just numbers that i'm giving uh, as an example, they are not something that is uh, straightforwardly calculated. Um, so remember, in our tree covering algorithm, this is an important input, the cost of each gate, and it can lead to lack of optimality. So that was our simple, um, uh, our simplifying the net list. Now we go into the second stage, which is treeifying. So again, we can have a, a, any given logic network, and this is a, a logic network. And what we want to do is we want to see that each output um, has a bunch of inputs. That's what a tree is. So the output is the node or the root of the uh, tree, and each of these inputs are the leaves of the tree. And we want to take some sort of input, such as this guy, and we want to trace through the tree. So if we trace through the tree, we can go and arrive at an input, and that's wonderful actually because we see that each node has a single root but if we take for example this guy here and we go and we start to traverse the tree we reach a uh, junction and that's not good because maybe this is the root of the tree and maybe this is the root of the tree therefore this is not a tree structure because this input for example has two uh, optional parents Okay, so what are we supposed to do? We have to break the tree any way that where there's a fan out of two. So that happened because this NAND gate had a fan out of two. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to break this guy. And what we arrived at is three trees. We have this tree, which is completely and totally a single tree where every input has one output. We have this tree and we have this tree. And once we did that, we can go and optimize each one of these trees. So that stage is called treeifying, and we have to go through the whole design, cut the uh, fan outs that are higher than one, and um, turn it into separate trees, and then apply our tree covering algorithm to each of these three trees. So that leads us to our third stage, which is the minimum tree covering stage. So we can apply the recursive algorithm to achieve the minimum cover. Let's see how this works. We start at the output of the graph, or uh, the, 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 root, the, the root of the tree, which we call i over here. And we see that there is some sort of a uh, logic gate um, that is driving the output. And the logic gate has a bunch of inputs. Okay. What we're going to do is recursively, we're going to look at each input of the uh, logic gate that is at that uh, that is driving that output and we're going to find uh, all the matching target patterns that we could have covered uh, each of these uh, input trees because each of these is also a tree in itself 
okay? And then we're going to uh, figure out or calculate what the cost of node i is. And the cost of this node here is the cost of the gate, okay? Plus the cost of this tree plus the cost of this tree. That's the cost of this uh, node, and that's a recursive function, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to try to find the minimum value of that. And if we find the minimum value of that, we have the minimum value of the cost at node i, which if we apply the same algorithm, for example, to node k1, then we'll find the minimum value of k1, and obviously that is part of the minimum value of i, because again, this is a tree. There are no um, uh, branching out to other trees and so forth. So for simplicity, uh, we're just going to help us in the illustrations on the next slide. We're going to re re redraw our graph, just use different symbols for how we show things. And we're just going to use a circle, an empty circle with an I inside to represent a not gate. This guy's a not gate. Okay. And we're going to have a uh, N inside a full circle, and that's a two input NAND gate. Finally, we're going to have a, a box that represents each input. So the input to an AND gate, if this was A, we're going to draw a, a little square with an A inside it. Okay, so let's see the example of how we do this. We're going to take this tree over here on the left. The tree has a root node, which is called F, and it has inputs A, B, C, and D. What we're going to do, and remember we've already simplified this, so it's only a bunch of NAND gates, uh, two input NAND gates and NOT gates. Okay, we're going to take our representation, and remember, this guy should turn into an I like that, and this guy should turn into an N, which is filled in, right? That just helps us look at it. And so this is our basic um, representation of this tree, and these are equivalent to each other. Another thing we did is we took each of these gates. It's actually each of the outputs, right? These are the I's on the previous uh, thing, each of these outputs, and we gave them letters. So this was called F, this one W, Y, Z, X, and each of the inputs we put inside a square here. The other thing, we have to simplify the, the, the uh, standard cell library. So we have over here our standard cell library, and inside we have a NOT gate, a two input NAND gate, a two input AND gate, a two input NOR gate, and an uh, AND or invert with two inputs and one output over here. And we used De Morgan to turn them into a bunch of NAND gates and inverters, and we gave each one of them a cost. This cost is just for the purpose of the example. Again, the making uh, deciding on this cost is a very important part that can lead to lack of optimality, because now our minimum tree covering is going to be optimal given this standard cell library, given this net list, and given these costs. Okay, so what are, uh, just to point out, right, this is an inverter. It has an inverter and one input. This is a two input NAND gate. It's a NAND gate with two inputs. This is a NAND gate because it's a NAND gate that drives an inverter and the NAND gate has two inputs and so forth. So these are just the um, NAND not representations of our standard cells. Okay, so now what are we going to do? We're going to start at the top. We're going to start with node F and remember this is recursive. We're going to say node F should be the minimum of the cost of the gate that we're going to put there plus the cost, the minimum cost of all of the node at the input of node W. So what we're going to do is we're going to check which patterns match. And we look at our standard cell library here. And we see that only this guy has actually at the top of it an I with one input, which is what fits over here. So only this has to be a not at the end. That's the only standard cell that uh, fits. Well, that's not exactly, but it sure does fit. Okay, so we say if we put a not at, uh, at node F, then the not has a cost of two. So we write two here, and we say that the, the minimum cost, if we decide to put a not gate here, is two plus the minimum of however much uh, the minimum cost of node W is. So we write that down. If F is implemented with a not, then the cost is two plus the minimum of node W. Well, we look along at our standard cell library and we see that this doesn't fit node F, but hey, what happens if we put this I here over here? It's connected to an N over here. Hmm, that looks like it should be. And this has two inputs. Wow, this N2 gate could also be stuck here and covered on um, our tree here. So if we decide to put an N2 gate there, the cost of the N2 gate is four. And we have to add to that the minimum of the cost of node Y and the, and, and the cost of node Z. Okay, 
So that's another possibility we have. What other possibilities do we have? Hmm, could this fit? Let's see, it's an inverter that goes into an AND gate, and it has uh, on one side an inverter, the other side an AND gate. Ah, that does not fit a NOR2. So we can't use the NOR2, but how about our AOI? An inverter, a NAND gate, hmm, uh, one side an inverter, and the other side an AND gate. Hmm, look at that. We can use our AOI to one to uh, cover this, all these four nodes. So let's take that into consideration. If it's an AOI 2-1, that gate costs 6. And we uh, have to look. The minimum of Y is 0 because A is the input. The minimum of B uh, over here of a, a, a is 0. But the minimum of this node is the minimum of X. So we get to 6 plus minimum of X. OK, we finished with node F. But now we have to find out what all these minimums are. So we go down to node W. So let's look at node W. Node W has an AND gate over here. And if we look at our standard cell library, it's easy to see that the only thing that could fit is this NAND2. So that's our only possibility, actually, to put a W. So the cost of W, if we implement it with an AND2 gate, is 3 plus the minimum of its two inputs, which are Y and Z. There are no other covers that could be possible at node W. So let's traverse down into node Y. Node Y it has an I here. And we look, well, it only has A at the input, so the only thing that it could possibly fit is this NOT gate. Not only that, uh, the NOT gate doesn't have any, uh, any logic that goes under it, and the cost of A is 0. So we know that the cost of Y is 2. That's the minimum cost of Y, and we have to put a NOT gate over there. Next, we go over to Z. Okay, Z, again, we have uh, an N over here at the top. And we look around, and the only thing with an N over at the top in our standard cell library is this NAND2 gate. So we can only implement it with an NAND2 gate, which costs 3 plus the minimum of this node is 0 and the minimum of X. So Z would be uh, applied with an NAND2 gate, costing 3 plus the minimum of X. Again, we go down to X, and we get the same thing. And X has to be applied with an NAND gate, so its cost is 3. So X costs 3. And then we can start going up stream and um, figuring out what the cost of each one of our nodes is. So we see that x costs 3, right? And we see that z costs 3 plus the minimum of x. The minimum of x we just found is 3. So this costs 3 plus 3. That equals 6. So uh, we see that z equals 6. Now we go up to y. y we already saw it equals 2. And we can traverse up to w. W costs 3 plus the minimum of Y. The minimum of Y we see is 2. And the minimum of Z is 6. So 3 plus 2 plus 6 equals 11. So we see the W, the minimum cost of W, sorry, is 11. Okay, next we go. And if we would have mapped the whole thing, uh, just the F, excuse me, to a NOT gate, right? Then we have 2 plus the minimum of W, 2 plus 11. That would equal 13. So one possibility, if we would put a NOT gate up here, right, we would get to a cost of 13. Okay. The other possibility is to take an AND gate here, put it on these two guys. In that case, we have 4 plus the minimum of Y, which is 2, plus the minimum of Z, which is 6, and we get to 12. So if we would have put an AND gate over here, uh, we would have had um, 12 as the cost. Finally, we can look and see what would happen if we would put an AOI that would cover all of these guys. And we see that the AOI costs 6 plus the minimum of X, which is 3. That means we arrive at 9. And that is obviously the minimum of all these. So what we want to do is we want to use an AOI. In the case of the AOI, we cover all of these guys with this nice AOI gate. And we uh, do the minimum of X. So we look, um, X should be with an AND2 gate. And so we are able to cover this with a minimum cost. So that is how we do our technology mapping, and that allows us to move from uh, our generic standard cell library into a, uh, a technology-dependent uh, standard cell library um, and uh, using our specific standard cells that are right for us. Um, so 
just going into our uh, little break for a moment in our lecture, we'll look at our Chip Hall of Fame for this week. And we're speaking about synthesis, right? So um, we'll go into a very famous synthesizer, and it's not a logic synthesizer, which we're le learning about, but rather a speech synthesizer. And this is the Texas Instruments TMC0281 speech synthesizer. Here's a picture of the chip on, on the bottom right. Um, the reason that this became very, very popular is because it was used in the Texas Instruments Speak and Spell machine, which you can see here, being held by our friend E.T., or used by E.T. to make his uh, communication system that he phoned home with. Um, but also, first of all, the Speak and Spell, which used to talk to you and say, can you spell this or that, was a, a very cool machine that uh, when I was a kid, everyone had. And um, it actually used this chip, which was able to use a bunch of buzzing, hissing, and popping sounds in order to make a uh, sound. It was released in 1978. It had a 44 millimeter um, chip size, and it was inducted in 2017 to the IEEE Chip Hall of Fame. Um, by the way, it was considered for a long time impossible to even make speech with uh, uh, just by uh, using synthesis. In, in other words, putting in some sort of a, a word and having a machine make the the sound but um, eventually in the late 70s they were able to do this with different speech synth synthesis uh, um, uh, chipsets and for um, for the 0281 it was the first single chip speech synthesizer and it became very popular